Shall we wake up my best friend? Slash roommate. Good morning. Hi, I'm Tiffany Poon, and I'm a 23-year-old professional pianist. Wow. I've been playing piano for 18 years, I've performed internationally, and I also vlog the behind the scenes on my YouTube channel. Because people have been so supportive of me, I wanted to do something to give back and thank those who are helping others in this really difficult time. <laughs> Every day, I have to balance being a professional pianist and managing my YouTube and social media. Here's what my day usually looks like. I wake up around 7.30 in the morning. Morning. On YouTube, I post at least once a week. This is where I do all of my YouTube editing. I started vlogging because I felt like classical music, it's kind of hard to connect with, especially for younger generations. I mean, I don't know how many teenagers really listen to classical music. I wanted to find a way where you could bring back some more human, relatable things to classical music. I'm gonna play soon. Get hyped. Since I live in New York, I don't want to annoy my neighbors, so I make sure that I don't start practice until a little bit later in the morning around 10.30 or 11. I have these foam things to help absorb some of the sound so that it's less echoey for myself, but also hopefully less loud and annoying for my neighbors. In general, I'll practice what I'm about to perform really soon, and then I'll practice until I get hungry for lunch time. Sometimes I'll go on IG story and post something, or I'll share what I'm practicing with my fans. Around 7 p.m., I'll start cooking dinner. Duck. Cooking is very much therapeutic to me. It tastes so good. Sometimes maybe more so than playing a piano. Sorry. At the end of the day, I close up the piano. Good night, piano. I try to not go to bed past midnight, maybe around 10.30. Then I wake up the next morning, hopefully, and do it all over again. Because of the current pandemic, everything is different now that I'm staying home. I haven't gone outside of my apartment in three and a half weeks. I might be going crazy. Uh, I'm home now all the time because all of my performances have been postponed or cancelled. This week, I had to give myself a little trim in the bangs because I cannot see anymore. I'm gonna attempt to do this. If there are any hairdressers out there, I sincerely apologize. Luckily, my motivation to keep practicing and keep striving hasn't changed. I just want to play and touch the piano because even though I can't touch my face, during this time I can touch the piano, right? And having this live stream concert was a great project for me to strive towards. In my apartment, I'm very, very lucky to have a Steinway Model B. I'm so grateful for my fans because they're the reason that I'm able to collaborate with Steinway and have this amazing friend here with me. This guy here takes up about 40% of my living room because I live in a New York City apartment. Since the piano is a priority here, over myself, I can't turn on the heat because I have to maintain the temperature and the humidity around the same levels for the sound to maintain around the same. My hands are freezing right now. These are the tuning pins. What happens if the temperature changes? Is that the strings will expand or just change the tuning as a result of that? I have to do these things to try to keep it more in shape. I have a close relationship with my piano. I might be in a relationship with a piano, who knows? But I do think you, it, I don't want to say it, he has a personality. <laughs> The way I connect with the piano, it just has to be something like a human connection. Because when I play the piano, it's basically like a human singing. I can't think of a machine robotic thing to be singing, so it has to be a human with a personality to me. How do you warm up? Is the number one question. If I feel kind of stiff, I might do a few stretches. Oh, I just cracked <laughs> my bones. Somehow the first thing I do 
is playing chromatic scales. No idea why. Although, I thought about it, and I think it's because if I play a chromatic scale, you play all the keys of a piano, I would like to know how each key sound. So I do this, but it only warms up three of my fingers, which is kind of stupid, right, as a warm-up. So you kind of need more than that. I still kind of do it subconsciously. I don't know why. Maybe Freud knows why. I think warming up should be about warming up my brain as well, not only just my fingers. So if I warm up with music instead of doing scales, I'm able to also warm up my brain and also maybe my heart in some sense so that I can really be all in one with the music. This week, I was rehearsing for the live stream concert. What was unique and really different about this concert was that I had no idea which pieces I was going to play because I wanted my fans to be involved. So I gave them a few choices to vote for on the morning of the concert. Out of the eight potential pieces, I actually had one that I hadn't really memorized yet. The last time I played this was uh, 13 months ago. So I just need to make sure that they are in my brain fully, 100%. How quickly I'm able to memorize a piece depends on how much I love the piece. If I hate it, it'll probably take me ages. But if I really love it, then I'm already connected to it somehow emotionally, and that connection really helps me memorize it even quicker. This particular piece, it translates into dedication. It's based on a German poem, actually, but uh, it's about love and about dedicating, I guess, kind of like dedicating this music to someone and for me it's dedicating to everyone who has been here supporting me but also to all the doctors and all the people suffering from COVID-19. I started getting really emotional about this project, this piece. So I'm getting slightly overwhelmed but also probably because I'm low on blood sugar and food. I still don't know where I'm going to get online groceries. I might just end up having to go out into the streets to get groceries because everywhere it's sold out. But I still have enough food, I think, through Saturday at least. The biggest hurdle I had all week was actually not the piano part, but dealing with tech. Yeah, I'm getting really scared <laughs> because it's only me and I know a lot of people are watching. I failed the first live stream test hmm. it should work but i'm getting slightly dizzy from all of this tech stuff this is why i am not a tech person come on come on come on come on come on, come on. please work please work throughout the week i tried so so many hours to make sure that everything will run smoothly for the live stream i made the thumbnail guess what because there's so many buttons i forgot to click this button this magic button go live <laughs> Yes! I felt like something was working, and then something smaller wasn't working, so I had to fix it, so I had to do so many tweaks. I'm going to play a little bit, test the levels, bring it back up so that people can hear me well tomorrow. It was too soft yesterday. My computer is starting to freeze, which is not good. We are about 24 hours before the live stream. Yikes. In an ideal situation, I would have asked a friend to come over and help me out with tech. But in quarantine, could not have done that. The night before the live stream, I had a nightmare where things did not go well. I don't know, I had tech issues during the live stream and I was really stressed out. And okay. then it came true. Today's the day. Saturday, I woke up and I was feeling slightly anxious. If tech didn't work, it didn't matter if I played perfectly. I actually had a very light breakfast because I was running out of food. I am checking the poll to see which one wins with the pieces. Um, I almost cried. Not like out of sadness, but out of surprise. 1,135 people have voted so far. It looks like this one is gonna win. I actually wanted this one to win because um, I like that piece. Ooh, Kinder Zenin is winning. <gasps> ah, okay, this is going as planned, sort of. At 9.50, I sent out all the signals to the platforms and it seemed like everything was working. Say hi, guys. <laughs> so that is my screen with the annoying fan noise. But then, once I switched the scene 
to just me playing the piano. It was the first piece was a Bach piece that I started. I didn't know that my computer started going crazy and started freaking out and the audio signal was not working. At the end of playing about 12 minutes, I turned to the computer and my phone was blowing up with notifications from my friends, from my manager, and everyone was freaking out. The audio's not working! The audio's not working! So my nightmare came true. I almost cried, but because I was on camera, I did not want to freak out and break down because I have to keep going. So I kept trying to restart the stream, try to test it. I was on the phone with my manager. and it seemed like the audio was working again and the video was working. I think for the first half hour after I fixed the live stream, the thought of what if the tech isn't working was still in the back of my mind. But I think eventually I just gave up thinking about that because I was pretty sure the audio at least would be working. So once I started playing my favorite pieces by my favorite composer, Schumann, I really just let myself go and just focus on playing. When I'm performing, I feel everything and nothing at the same time. Nothing in the sense that I try to block out of the outside environment and just focus on unfolding the music. Everything, meaning that I am so inside the music that I feel every single emotion or thought that comes with each note. When I played the last chord of the live stream concert, I had a really weird feeling. On the one hand, I was done. On the other, I was kind of disappointed because I really wanted everything to be perfect and it clearly was not there was a lag in the video. But at least the audio was working because music is really the primary focus. So it was half a success, half a failure in my opinion. But I was also so overwhelmed by all of my fan support. Ah, people were so nice. Look at all of this. This is just Twitter and I'm least active on Twitter. There's more on Instagram, I haven't even opened my DMs. In a way, that was the biggest audience that I've played for. I think the largest audience I've played for ever in my life was around 2000. So this definitely was the biggest. But of course, I was alone in my apartment, so it was weird. It's been about two hours since I ended my live stream. I felt really overwhelmed suddenly by everyone's support. But then I also got really sad thinking how privileged I am because I know there are people dying. Oh man, tears are like bubbling up again. I wanted it to be a way to give back to my audience and to the doctors. And I'm also so surprised that we were able to race beyond my goal, which is amazing. I don't think there is a hardest thing about being a professional pianist because I just enjoy playing the piano so much and I enjoy sharing it with others. Playing music is very emotional and it's a way for me to not only connect with myself but also connect with others, which is why I love playing music a lot. Even if it's a challenge, or a difficult thing, I still think it's worth it. So there's always an upside.